Content warning. Echo can be emotionally intense experience. It may not be for everyone. Echo contains themes of adult nature, including violence, torture, drug usage, and harsh language. Viewer discretion is advised. Aren't you hurt? He thinks for a second. I don't think so. I feel fine. I mean, turn around. I'd seen Clint hit Leo with a crowbar and he hit him hard. Leo sighs before finally turning around, placing his paws on the sink and he stares it into the mirror. I look at his back, the black shirt dusted from all the dirt he had rolled in. Carefully, I lift the shirt up his back. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I can see the raised fur from the growing welt where the, where the crowbar had hit, though. There aren't any cuts there, but I do see some spots of dried blood. You have a bunch of little cuts. I see the smooth muscle underneath Leo's fur shift as he flexes them. Huh? Really? Must have been from the rocks in the road. I think my shirt came up a little when we were wrestling around. Give me the alcohol. Leo sighs again, but hands it over. And take off your shirt. He smirks at that and slowly, purposely, sensually strips his shirt off. I try to ignore him, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't turned on by his body. It's been a long time since I last saw him shirtless, and he's kind of, he's kind of changed. He's thicker, broader, and in, in the shoulders and chest, the muscles smoother and a little more filled out. I swallow and start to dab the alcohol into the cuts. He makes no indication of feeling any pain, instead swishing his tail around and flicking it up between my legs. Again, I don't know why. But Leo has a way of making you want to play along, even if you know it's a bad idea. He's been flirting with me this whole time, so I guess he's sort of just broken down my defenses. Once I finish the rubbing, out, rubbing in the alcohol, I let a paw linger on Leo's hip. We both sway for a little while until Leo finally turns around, leaning back against the sink. Aw, oh, look at the belly! I look over his form, his broad chest down to his thick stomach. Like what you see? When I look back up at him, his brows are raised, and before I can say anything, he's leaning down. I think he's about to kiss me, so I turn my head to the side. But instead, he just nuzzles the side of my head as he brings me in for a hug. I freeze for a second, but relax into his hold after a while, enjoying the feel of his warm fur against mine. He doesn't say anything, just holds me. I can feel his excitement through his pants as he presses it into me, then starts nibbling on my ear. I gasp as he catches it between his teeth, and I almost moan. He, of course, knows I have sensitive ears. He... Oh, is this getting to the heated part? Oh, that's a little heated. Oh, boy, 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 boy. My head throbs again, and I think about the fall, but he holds on onto me before he begins digging his muzzle into my neck. Yep. Leaning back. Growls. Fucking hell. He moans. So yeah, Comfy's just gonna zoom right past this. Because it's not visual, it's just me reading it. It's just the me part reading it. So yeah, we're gonna come back to that. Then he jumps and spins around, knocking over the soap dispenser and first aid kit. I jump too. What? Leo continues to stare, one paw clutching his chest, the other digging into my thigh. I, I, I wait for him to finish, but he doesn't go on. Did you see something? Thought I did. Just seeing things, I guess. Finally turns his attention to the first aid kit and leans over and starts to pick everything back up. Slowly, I slide down from the sink, pushing my shirt back into place, realizing that the moment had passed. While I'm curious as to what he saw, I'm also conscious of the fact that the break in our intimacy had made things awkward again. Do we check the house? Could, could be Clint. No, no, it wasn't Clint. Leo grabs his shirt and pulls it back on before turning to me, just seeing things. I think back to Clint. Well, all right. As we leave the bathroom, Leo looks back in for a moment before flipping the light off. I think it's a little strange that he makes sure to close the door. Leo doesn't make a move on me again that night, instead keeping a good few inches between us on the bed. I can't help but wonder if I did something wrong. What I do know is that... I'm kind of disappointed. 
Big oof. I'm sorry, Otter. That was weird. He definitely saw something in the mirror reflection. Possibly another Otter. <clears throat> that entire thing is still weird. By morning, Leo seems to have perked up a bit. It starts with some good news from Flynn. Carl had been in the crawl space. According to him, it had been too hot to sleep anywhere but there. Of course, that's fucking insane, but it's definitely something Carl might do. In better spirits, Leo suggests we go out to some burger joint, to which I agree. On the way, we chat about my project. So, obviously, I don't want to spend all of our time just having fun. You have a project to do, after all. Yeah, I don't remind him that most of this messing around has been his idea. Though we do need to hang out with TJ today, if that's okay. I promised him we would yesterday. He's been feeling kind of down, obviously. I look down at the my sausage biscuit sandwich and the excess grease glistening in the sunlight shining through my windows. I was thinking the park? Yeah, that sounds like fun. So what do you still need to do? I take a bite to give myself time to think. Well, honestly, I'm not too sure. The whole premise is about the the body that was found in the mine. Yeah, well, what was that about? Well, I read about it in the website. Apparently some guy's mutilated body was found in the mines and everyone in the town lost their minds. A website? Yeah. Uh, shouldn't you have a better source than that? Well, especially if the whole idea of your project is based off of that. I blush. Someone like Leo chastising me about journalistic integrity is kind of embarrassing. Leo is so hot, but like there are so many fucking red flags on top of this man that the fact like there's so many red flags on top of him. He could be his own con country like there's so many red flags, Denny. I'm trying to like this guy, but my eyes see the red flags. I love him, though, but like ugh, the, the, the part of me just, that that was the same with Shane and like from freaking stardew valley and among other dating sims of like i could change him they're both bad for different reasons yeah they are they both have red flags on them it's not that he's stupid i guess i'm just used to feeling like the brains of our dynamic Ugh. i mean it's cited i just need to get the book which is something else we'll need to do do you have a library card nope wow surprising but i could sign up for one Leo nudges me. Don't be bitter. I just want you to do a good job. I'm the one that went to college. I know what I'm... You didn't have to say this. He did not have to say this, first of all. Leo laughs. You know, I read a study about college kids. A study? Sounds like something you wouldn't know about considering you don't go to college. Right. Anyway, it was about how college doesn't make you smart, just more liberal. Uh-huh. So is that a bad thing? Well, paying 20000 a year to get indoctrinated just doesn't appeal to me. I frown. Is that why you stopped going? Or have you just been looking up these studies to make yourself feel better about quitting? Leo pauses. That's a strong word. I guess... I just realized that what I had was good enough. My dad makes more than most college grads and he's teaching me the trade too. Leo pauses to change his lanes around a massive 16-wheel carrying what looks to be steel. And I'm already certified. Okay, where exactly are you going on with this? I just want to make sure you're okay with that is all. Oh, well, I'm not Jenna. As long as we're as long as you're doing what you want, I really don't care what it is you decide to do. Leo smiles. Which is a good mentality to have when dating a partner, when dating someone. Cause like as as long as you're doing something you like, I don't care what else you do. Well, good. And if we, you know, I'm not saying we will, but if we ever got together again, I'll be able to support you. Well, just don't make fun of me for going to college and what degree I decide to go into. You know you're good enough of a writer already. You should, you could have just started up a blog or something. What? I just read that that's what journalism is these days. I start sulking again. Maybe you should just stop looking these things up. At least I'm learning to do something. It's not like I just got a degree in psychology and stopped there. Well, didn't you tell me you wanted to go into history? Isn't that worse? 
<clears throat> Let's just drop it. Oh boy. Okay, but be honest. Leo's hot. He's so fucking hot. I can't. This man has too many red flags, but he's hot as fuck. Like, goddamn. I don't know if it's the southern accent that I'm giving him or like the the little sp like Spanish terms of endearment that he gives Chase. Like that's my fucking weakness. Like come on. I already dated one guy like that. And they're both like I said this in the what's it called? I said this in the 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 visual novel Discord group that I'm in. Like this the things that Leo is doing are too similar to what happened to me in real life. Like, they're too close for comfort. With, like, the entire computer situation and how he's talking right now. So, like, this hits a little too close to heart. So, yeah. I'd feel uncomfortable finding that's all the porn you look up at. It's like seeing, like, just, like, a, guy, a white guy looking up just Asian while dating an Asian guy. It's just, it's just weird. Jula, I'm not making fun of you. Well, when someone starts sounding like my dad, I think that's a good time to end the conversation. Aw, you're not into that? Definitely not. We drive in silence for a while as Leo pulls out his food from the brown, greasy stained paper bag. As we're heading back, he nudges me. Hey, I have an idea. He talks with his mouth full and one hand holding onto his sauce to a sausage biscuit while the other steers. Are you asking me or are you asking me? Hey, both hands on the wheel. Leo chuckles as he swigs from his orange juice carton and with his, with his steering paw before returning it to the wheel. Even when I'm in the car with you, you'll drive like shit. Hey, I'm way more careful when you're with me. That makes me feel so much better. Good. He takes another huge bite. I wait a wh while he chews, and when he finishes, he takes another bite. You were saying? Oh, yeah. You know those train tracks behind my yard? Didn't you say those were important somehow? Yeah. Echo used to be an important junction. Well, why don't you go there and you can film some stuff? The rail yard is only like a five-minute walk away. I think... Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. Leo smiles, panting a little in the heat, looking proud of himself. Cool. We'll go over once we get back. There's not much left of the old train yard. The building that used to be the service junction is basically gone, save for the foundation. There are two groups of abandoned freight cars with Golden Gate South Southwestern in chipped in paint. Oh. On the sides. I'm happy to see it since it's, it'll help with the scenery I'm trying to capture. After doing a few panning shots along with some close-ups of the cars, I lean against the old freight tra freight car with my head back. I close my eyes against the heat. It's almost noon, so it's almost impossible to find any good shade out there. For some reason, it's only now that I'm realizing how stupid it was to do this so early. The sunset would have looked a lot better along with it being a lot cooler. Leo's been gone almost 20 minutes at this point. He said he was going to get some water bottles, but it's been a while. The sweat seeping into my shirt makes me my skin crawl. After looking around, I peel it off and hang it up against a small metal ladder on the frame of one of the freight cars. I lean back against the exact same spot I was earlier, where it isn't burning and hot, and resume closing my eyes. Vaguely, I wonder how many miles this thing has covered, how much of the country it's seen. The railway was closed down in the 60s, so it's at least 50 years old. Unless they're just using Echo as a dump for unwanted train cars and left them here recently. A lot older than I am, there's something weirdly comforting about leaning against something that's been through so much. Almost reassuring. It's like swimming in an old river or a lake that's been around for millions of years. <clears throat> something brief connected to things that are Something brief connected to things that are permanent. I hear rustling through the grass on the other side of the car, but I keep my eyes closed. Leo, I think I'm gonna die. I'm not built for the heat. I wait, but he doesn't say anything. Leo? The rustling starts up again. A long, slow drag through the dried vegetation. This time it sounds like it's coming from under the train. Le Leo? I finally open my eyes and step away from the car, turning around to look 
at it and see like I can see through it. What are you doing? Obviously trying to scare me. Leo was never as subtle as Jenna. But he did his fair share, at least, for trying. I lean over to look under the car, glaring. You know, if you're trying... I met with emptiness under the car. The dirt, just dirt, dead grass, and rusted rails. Was it some kind of animal? Sound pretty big to be... Ah! Why did he scare me? Why did Leo just scared me? Why was this a jump scare? God. Chase! Fuck! Heavy paws slams on my shoulder, and I jump as Leo shouts right next to my head. I stumble forward, but he grabs me, laughing. <laughs> Holy shit! I've never seen you jump that hard before. Normally, I'd be pissed, but that buildup just had me glad it was Leo. How the hell did you do that? Do what? That whole setup you did. Well, you see, first I take my hand and slap it on your shoulder. No, the whole walking around behind me and making that dragging sound under the car. Huh? Leo looks confused. I frown. I guess it would be kind of impossible for someone Leo's size to sneak around like that without me seeing him. Did you hear something? Leo mimics my earlier position and bends over to look under the train. Yeah, but there wasn't anything under anything there. I thought you were just trying to scare me. Well, I was, but I didn't do that. Probably some animal or something. There's a lot of weird wildlife out here, you know? He stands up. That would have been a good idea, though. It sounds really heavy, like a person. Could have been, you know, a lot of the weirder people around here like to come here to get drunk and high or whatever. Sounds fun. I must still look a little unnerved because Leo sets a hand on my shoulder. Well, I'm here now, so don't worry. His eyes drift down to look at my torso. Damn, you kept in shape. Well, better shape. I smirk, rubbing my shoulder. Swimming every day helps. Leo rubs my shoulder, grinning. You look, you look good. You always say that. And I always mean it. Well, thanks. I've gotten to the point where I've just stopped pretending that there isn't at least something still there between us. And I think I've stopped pretending that nothing's going to happen on this trip eventually. What really worries me is that what will happen after. Leo, meanwhile, slides his hand over my stomach. Not that I care if you get any weight. That just ha that happens, but I like you this way. Yeah, it happens. I only hesitate for a moment. I slide my own hand underneath his shirt and Leo makes a soft gasping noise as I press it up against his stomach. His ears hold back though, he keeps a grin on his face. Being a wolf makes it harder, you know? I believe you. As if trying to convince me he hasn't really gained any weight, he flexes his abs, flattening his soft fur on his stomach against my palm. Steel wrapped in velvet. But you know I'm into that. I get the urge to adjust my pants on my dick as in jamming so uncomfortably into the crotch. But I don't want to make it that obvious tomorrow. You mind feeling some other part of me? You're making me feel fat. I giggle before I slide my hand up his torso. Oh my god, it's another... They're just feeling each other up in the middle of... Like, come on! Come on! You can't be doing this. Oh my god. I think this place does things to us, Chase. Remember our first kiss? This isn't the exact spot. Was it really six years ago already? I sigh, then slide both my hands under his shirt and wrap them around his waist, burying my face in his chest. Leo hugs back as he starts nibbling at my ears, which makes me gasp. Hey, can we just enjoy the moment? Leo giggles. I am. I look up at him, and I'm not sure if I ran into it, but we kiss. It's a small peck, but then Leo pushes his hand behind my head and pushes me deeper into the kiss. He opens his muzzle to clamp around mine, Frenchin, still for a moment, and so is he waiting for me to respond. When I do, it's with my paws around his back and kissing back. A soft crack to my right makes me jerk my head from the kiss to look over. Kutsu is standing there, his arms folded. Leo coughs in surprise, pulling back as well and wiping his muzzle. Oh, uh, Kut, Kut, Kutsu, what's up? Damn, these, these, these two idiots are not subtle at all with anyone. Whatsoever. The raccoon's expression is hard to read as usual, but I see the corner of his muzzle quirk up after a while. Not much. What's up with you? 
oh, you know, stuff. Leo laughs and finally Kutso smiles. Hey, hey, Kutso. I speak up feeling awkward staying silent after Kutso caught us like that. He nods in my direction. Chase. So, what are you guys really doing out here? Seems like kind of a dumpy place to be doing that. I blush, but turn and point to my camera bag sitting inside the, the opening of a car. I was filming for my project. This place is important to Echo's history. I see. We could ask you the same thing. Well, I'm not exactly doing that, am I? Anyway, I just take walks sometimes on my days off. In the middle of the day? Usually. He narrows his eyes at me, clearly thinking that I'm suspicious about something, so I quickly add. I mean, it just gets so hot out here at times like the day. I'd die. Kazuo shrugs his shoulder nonchalantly. I don't know. I go for walks a lot. That's what I was doing last night when I found you two. Hey, thanks for stepping in last night. That could have ended badly. Kazuo shrugs again. It would have. Had to do something. Had to do something, didn't I? Well, we appreciate it. Leo wraps around an arm around me and hugs. So, uh... How was he when he came to? Pissed, obviously. He always is. But he said some things last night. You should stay away from him for a while. Because his normally plastic face shows some concern for the first time. What? He said he was going to kill me? Leo said it lightly. Like it's not a big deal. Among other things. His eyes flick to me. I give a start. What? Whoa, 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 wait. Did he say some shit about Chase? Leo's hackles raise, and I can see him starting to bare his teeth. Again, he was on something last night. He may not even remember it, but I'm just warning you to be careful around him from now on. Kudso looks back at Leo. Don't provoke him. I wouldn't if he wasn't such a fucking asshat. Just ignore him. I swear to God, if he talked about doing shit to chase, his grip tightens around me even more. Just ignore him. I wouldn't. Blah, 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 blah. Again. Okay. I, I skipped too far. Oh, wait. Hey, I've been gone in, gone in. I'll be gone in a few days. Don't worry about it. I'm just getting really tired of that meth skeleton messing with everything I do. And if he fucking tries something with you, Leo. The air is tense and I can feel Leo growling deep in his throat. Wanting to change the subject, I speak up. Um, hey, Kutsa, you know we were going out. We're going to go out to the park and hang out. Do you want to come? Thanks, but I think I'm good. Leo perks up from his brooding. You know what? I think that's a good idea. We were going to play some soccer, but there's only going to be the three of us. You could help us even it out. Cuts those things. Well, I suppose I could use a workout. Yeah. You're just like TJ. I think you guys will get along great. I don't really see TJ and Cutso getting along just because they're fitness conscious. They're practically night and day. Well, we're heading out right about now. You're going to come? Kudso hesitates for a second longer before he nods his head in a quick jerk. All right, yeah, why not? And with that, I gather up my equipment and we head back to Leo's room. I mean house. Oh my god. It's not surprising that Echo hardly has an inch of flat grass in the entire town. Leo says they're planning to lay down sod next to the lake when the area is further developed. But as of now, we'll have to settle for the park near Peyton. Oh my god. This is so much. It's a plain stretch of grass, usually used for youth soccer games. In fact, I can remember when I was a part of that same organization. Back when my stubby legs didn't matter as much. Of course, after a few years, it became clear that being an otter, I wasn't built for the sport. That's when I took up swimming, of course. But then I realized that I wasn't really great at that either of course i could outswim any non-aquatic but when it came to other otters i was pretty much the bottom of the barrel as we drive tj sighs next to me 
I look over at him and he's got his elbow against the armrest, staring out the window as we pull into the empty parking lot. Everything all right? DJ's ears perk and he looks over at me, clearly forcing a smile. Of course! You don't seem that way. What's up? I lean closer to him. Leo's talking to cuts on the front, so we have some amount of privacy. TJ looks down at his lap for a moment, then just shrugs. I think it's pretty obvious, Chase. The whole trip has been pretty, pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. I'm about to counter that it hasn't been that bad, but he goes on. I just think it might have been best if, he, if I hadn't come. I feel bad is all. The way he tries to not frown, but does anyway, is both heartbreaking and adorable at the same time. I automatically rest my paw on his shoulder reassuringly. Stuff happens, right? We came here to have fun, and that's what we're doing right here. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's just that I feel bad for everyone else. What happened yesterday, I think it affected everyone. No way! I had a great time with Leo yesterday. Wasn't sad at all. I realize that that statement makes me look like I total a total asset, but TJ just nods as Leo Park because he didn't say I had fun with you guys yesterday. No, he said I had fun with Leo yesterday. We're here. We reach the field, Kutso immediately starts jogging the length of the of it while TJ stretches. I stand awkwardly for a second, not really sure if I should join them since that felt a little overboard for something so casual. At least I hope it's casual. Leo rests the soccer ball against his hip as he joins me. They're so eager, huh? Apparently. Well, it's not a bad idea. Don't want to pull anything. So me and Leo do a few awkward stretches before the other two join us in the middle of the field. So, time to pick teams. There's only four of us. Shouldn't be too hard. Want to pick? Kutso looks between us before his eye settles on me. Chase. Oh, okay. Probably could best to keep the lovers off the same team to avoid distraction. I at least want a little bit of challenge. That's what gave Leo a little smirk. I blush, but Leo smiles easily, rolling his eyes. It's not like that. Uh-huh, sure. So, I'm on Leo's team, right? DJ si sidles up to Leo's side and the wolf puts an arm around his shoulders. Yep, you're lucky to have me. You know, in my country, we had a war over soccer once. I don't believe you. It's true! Thousands died in the football war. Wait, do you call it football? Because that seems pretty confusing since you're really into the other football. I live here now, so football is soccer and football is football. But if I were to call it sock, but if I were to call soccer football, I'd call it football. Wait, what? Ouch. Let's just start. Katsu looks around. Since there's a few of us, why don't we just play half field? Grab a few rocks to mark the mark the goal. After that, we start playing, and for me, it's pretty much a disaster. TG, of course, dominates us all, and he dodges around me with ease, making me look like an idiot as I spin around trying to catch him, falling on my ass more than once. Katsu is able to hold on his own for the most part, but TJ gets it past him without much difficulty. I think the Lynx realized how badly he's beating us after a while and starts to ease off. He passes it to Leo more often and only really steps in when we get when we get near the goal. Leo, while big, is slow as hell and I actually managed to steal the ball from him a few times. I also think it's because he's not taking this seriously at all because he keeps laughing and slapping me with his tail when I run past. At one point, with the score at 7-0, I managed to get near the goal. TJ jogs in as I kick the ball clumsily, and it's so clear that he misses on purpose that everyone bursts out laughing as it rolls into the net. TJ frowns. What? That was a real great kick, Chase. I lean over, resting my hands on my knees as I gasp for breath. If you're gonna let me score, you have to make it look more convincing than that, man. Also, I'm not five. I can handle getting my ass kicked. After a while, we switch up teams at, with TJ on my side and Katsu and Leo together. It's a bit more even after that, with me being TJ's handicap and all. After about half an hour, we call it quits and head back to the parking lot where Leo throws us water bottles. I wipe my face as I sit on one of the parking blocks. Even though it's early evening, the weather is still way too damn hot. Leo and TJ are already up again, TJ showing him some of the moves he had so viciously used on me. 
I'm glad to see that TJ is somewhat happy again. His ears are up, and he's smiling as he runs circles around Leo. Hey, how am I supposed to learn anything if you're just going to use them on me? Just trying, trying to make me look dumb, eh? Sorry, uh, sorry. All right, first thing you need to do... I know Cuts is standing a few feet away, watching along with me. So, I guess you know Leo since you moved in Echo? Cuts will look over to me before leaning back against Leo's fan. Yeah, he saw me moving in and insisted on helping, so that's how I met him. Sounds like Leo. Cutso takes a swig from his water bottle. He's a good guy. Definitely. So, you used to live here, right? In Payton? Unfortunately. I guess Leo told you. Yeah. I also remember Leo saying that some bad things had happened in the city for the raccoon. In Raccoon City. So I wonder if I should press or not. Hey, sorry if it seems like I was making fun of your name a few days ago. It's a cool name, just different, you know? Cutso smirks. No, I know it's weird. You just got me at a bad time is all. I spread my legs out, sighing as my knees pop. Ugh, I'm not built for running around. Well, yeah, you're built for swimming. I raise my eyebrow at the bluntness. It's not really a specious thing to say, but most people don't often point out the specious aptitude. Um, so I guess I wonder, why'd you move to Echo? It's such a dump. That's a silent for a while. In the meantime, we watch Leo fall on his ass after TJ kicks the ball between his legs. People. People are the reason why I left Peyton. Oh. Peyton is technically a small city with just 70,000 people. Compared to the Pueblo, that's nothing. The more people that are... The, the more people there are, the worse it is. It's the same anywhere. Ah. Okay. That's what goes on. Sure, in Echo, there's a hundred shitty people, but... It be in Payton, there's 50,000 of them. I, I prefer Echo. His tone is dark, so at this point, that I don't even respond. Something definitely happened here in Payton, and I don't dare to ask what it was. Luckily, I'm saved in awkward silence as Leo haphazardly kicks the ball in our direction, and TJ comes running up to us. Damn it. All right, I think that's enough for today. He jogs over, wiping his face. Man, I need a shower. You two getting along? When Kuzo didn't say anything, I piped up. Yeah. Leo frowns, clearly sensing something's wrong. Well, okay. Anyway, let's go out and get some ice cream. I've really been craving it. I stand up slowly, my knees popping again as we all pile into the car. As we drive, CJ continues to stare out the window, but his ears are up and he doesn't seem so depressed anymore. I lean over towards him. You feeling better? CJ turns to look at me, smiling. Yeah, it was fun playing with you guys. I grin. You're insanely good. He shakes his head. Not compared to the other guys at school. I'm not aggressive enough, but... It's fun. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. TJ nods. It's too bad we can't come back and do it again tomorrow. M why not? Not that I'm crazy about doing it again, but I'm not sure what would prevent it. He looks at me. Well, your project. I frown. I don't think... Hey! What flavor do you guys want? Leo practically shouts back at back at us. I look around. We aren't even at the ice cream parlor yet. That doesn't seem to matter to TJ, though. Oh, cookie dough. It's been a long time since I've had it. Really? I didn't know you liked that, liked that flavor. And somehow Leo was able to keep up the conversation about ice cream flavors all the way to the actual ice cream parlor. I decided the, sh the shots I got earlier in the day were too bright, not representative of the sad state of the town that I wanted. The setting sun does a better job of capturing the desolation and bittersweet depression of it all. A metaphor for an end, in a way. At least that's how I hope it come across. I lean back against the old rusted car, clicking in up through the images I've taken. It feels very quiet, despite the wildlife around me. And so that's why it's easy for me to pick up the footsteps headed my direction. At first I think it's Leo, and I wondered how he's finished up with his shower so quickly. But then I realized that the crunch of dried vegetation is too soft, too light for Leo. I look up, kind of hoping to see Cutso, but instead I'm greeted with the sight of Clint headed in my direction. <laughs>